Michael Van Gerwen, the newly crowned seven-time Players Championship Finals champion. Uh, we're less than 24 hours after you beat Rob Cross at Minehead. What did it mean to pick up that title in the way that you did? Nine darter, 170 finish? I yeah, mean... I, played, I played quite well to be fair, can't really complain, but uh, yeah, it's a nice one to win uh, for, yeah, for the seventh time. Uh, I worked hard, I think I had a good tournament, uh, so to, to, yeah, to put it back in my pocket gives me a lot of confidence towards the World Championships. And we saw that you were emotional on stage afterwards talking with Dan Dawson, uh, mentioning that your daughter had asked if you were going to bring home the big trophy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that you've won and you know that you are bringing home the big trophy that you wanted, how does that feel to know that it doesn't yeah, come with you? But to win the trophy is always nice and <laughs> it's good for myself that it still means something to you because it means the hunger is still there to, to win trophies and that's for myself really important. And also uh, with your family, just continuing that line, you have a son as well. Uh, yeah. So as a dad of two, it sounds like your eldest, obviously with mentioning trophies, is now at a stage where she knows a little bit of what daddy yeah, does. Yeah, exactly. Living. She starts to now understand what I do. You know what I mean? And my son, yeah, he doesn't have it. Sometimes, yeah, he sees he's a daddy, daddy, but for the rest, he doesn't have a clue. <laughs> so that's a bit different. But uh, yeah, it's how, how life goes. Yeah. Uh, I've got a lovely family and uh, yeah. It's so extra special to have her at yeah, the age course, where she can move along. <laughs> yeah, now she starts to watch me on television and that's nice. <laughs> Excellent. Um, starting out in darts, you obviously want to win titles for yourself. Now that you've got the family, does the motivation to carry on for them come into effect as well? Uh, I, I love... I do. I also love what I do. So for me, it doesn't. It, it's not extra. I don't need extra motivation or something like that. I, it's just. It's my job. It's something I love to do, especially playing on the big stages. And yeah, the, especially when you win, when you get rewarded, it's always extra nice. Uh, and we're talking at the media launch for the World Championship, yeah. Kazoo World Championship, as it were. Uh, you often get asked around this type of year if you have one eye on the World Championship yet. Now that that's the next tournament on the calendar, we presume you have two eyes on it, as of it course, were. Of course, of course, people, uh, of course. People, of course, after the play championship finals, the, the, the only thing what's important then is playing the world championship and make sure you're going to win it. But uh, don't look too far ahead of you because it's going to be a long way and it's going to be a long one half month. So you need to be prepared for anything. And do you start that preparation immediately, or do you give yourself a little no, bit I of a got, break? I, I got the, I probably have some few days off, and then I start my preparation for the for the world championship, few exhibitions, uh, media stuff. Uh, yeah, just general stuff as well. And this will be the 17th consecutive World Championship, and some will have forgotten that your first was in the BDO at Lakeside in 2007. Um, you'd only just won the World Masters as a 17-year-old, which is still insane. You were a tournament favorite, lost out in that round. What do you remember, if anything, of that first World Championship? Uh, my first World Championship was uh, uh, against uh, Gary Robson. I lost in the first round, 3-2 in sets. But uh, after that, I of course went to the PDC and uh, I, I lost to Phil Taylor. And uh, yeah, but that was history. <laughs> Since then, I did a lot of good things as well. And uh, yeah, you have to start somewhere. And you moved to the PDC after that, after finishing runner up in 2013. One year later, January 1st, 2014, you beat Peter Wright to get your hands on the Citadel Trophy. In fact, that was the first world championship I ever saw because I had just moved to this country. Okay. <laughs> um, Almost nine years ago now, what memories of that first big world championship come back to your mind if you think on it? Yeah, I had a really good tournament, played really well. Of course, the final against uh, uh, Peter White was, was a tough one. I had to work really hard for that. Uh, because the, yeah, the year before, I lost the final against uh, um, Phil Taylor. So you always need to learn first how to lose finals before you can be a champion. And uh, I've learned a lot. I've, Hit my nose against the wall so many times, and that makes you stronger. That makes you a better dog player. As long as you keep investing in yourself and keep believing and keep working hard, then everything is possible. And then you had your second world title in 2017 and third in 2019. Arguably the most dominant of the three. You just dropped five sets the entire way to the final. I don't think many people could have predicted that um, it's been the longest win since then. How hungry are you to reclaim the Worlds again for a fourth time? Yeah, of course, really. Uh, of course, everyone know I had a disaster period of, uh, for myself with my injury of my hand, we had the corona times, but everything is, not, is back to normal now and that's good for myself. Uh, I enjoy what I do and uh, yeah, I hope uh, I can do some great damage 
and keep continuing the damage while I'm doing at the moment on the other tournaments as well to, to watch the World Championships. It's only good. And like you said last year, that run ended with the positive test for COVID and having to rule out of that. Did that disappointment fire up this this year overall as uh, just no. things are getting back to normal or is it the same business? Same business. It's just another world championship but you need to make sure you, you keep your focus going. And uh, this year, everyone can see I'm in good form, I'm sharp, I'm doing the right things at the right moment. And there's one more tournament where I have to do that and that's the world championships. And before you won the title in Minehead, you'd already won the Premier League World Match Play and World Grand Prix this year. Yeah. Um, before we go into the Worlds, if you had to rate this year so far, would you? how would you say it ranks on your year in terms of the highest highs, lowest lows, in terms of, I mean, you've achieved a lot. Is this one of your best years? On yeah, I think this is one of my best years. So of course, we had 2017 or 18, or I can't really remember. Was it called 19 even? I can't remember. It was a really good year, but uh, this year, yeah, it's one of my top years, of course, to win all that big tournaments. You have to play well, simple as that. And when you look at the ranking titles on TV this season, it's either been you or a first time winner. There's been no other options. Nobody's no, caught another a, one. Outside myself at the moment, you know, when I'm not winning the tournament most of the time, uh, all the. All the people close to me on the ranking not doing too well in the tournaments either so it's uh, it's been tough and it's a long it's been a long season but uh, yeah you have to you have to hit your target sometimes and especially when it matters and that's that's what you want to does that make darts now currently harder than it's yeah. ever been yeah probably probably there's a lot of players who can hit 110 average day, these days so you, you need to be prepared uh, uh, on everything, in every game, under every circumstance, all the time, and you can't, uh, you can't be weak in the game somewhere because they 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 there to grab you. Simple, that's how it works. Yep. And one player who's just given a lot of attention, if you can just have a few words, is obviously Josh Rock. Um, came out in a close battle in the Grand Slam only a few yeah. weeks ago. You know, he's 21 years old, just won the World Youth Title last night. Just what do you make of his kind of emergence and debut on the scene as somebody who also had yeah. success as a youth? Um, he, he, does, he does extremely well at the moment and uh, he's thrown with a lot of confidence. He also doesn't have any scars at the moment, so he's playing freely still. So I'm wondering how it goes when he had also some tough defeats to handle, you know what I mean? And that's also so, but if you're just going to look to his future, yeah, it looks bright of course, but still a long way to go for him. And away from the World Championship, the world number one spot is something we're sure you would like to have back. And obviously, after winning last night, not sure if you're aware, but you may be aware, that right now, if you win Alexander Palace, you'll be back to world number one. Is that something that you're shooting for? Is that something that feels special, holding that of number course, one spot? Of course, you always want to be number one. I've been there for a long time, but uh, in, the, in the upcoming two years, I have to win minimum of one World Championship title to make sure that's going to happen, so I'm looking forward to it. That's my task, that's my goal, and that's what I have to do. So. And the draw for the Worlds takes place later on today. Um, for you, how different will the next two weeks in terms of preparation after your break be? Is there any specific set hours? Do you have no, a no, routine? No, no. I don't have a routine. I always do the same. Just relax. Same, same routine. Because if, why would you do things different now compared yeah. to other tournaments? That means the other tournaments are not that important. I always prepare myself 100%. You can do more than 100%. Yep. And if it's winning, why would you change the process? Exactly. That exactly. You never change winning team. And this is just a personal question. Uh, in terms of darts in the Netherlands, obviously, each year the World Cup team changes. There's just so many yeah. people battling it out really harsh. Is there anyone that you've kind of noticed that seems kind of up and coming that we should just be aware of? No, at the moment, not really, to be fair. Um, it's been a bit quiet, but you never know because uh, we go, people, a lot of guys go back to Q school, and from there on, you need to see who's going to get the tour card. And a lot of, there will be a lot of entries, of course, also from Holland. So we, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to see, but I think with the players at the moment on the tour, with the Vince van der Voort and Danny Norbert and Dirk, I think we already have a big field anyway. And just one away from the darts, we've got World Cup going on for the football. Netherlands are at the top of their group, looking good to qualify. Uh, the lads want to know, how do you rate their chances of making it through the knockouts? At the moment, if they keep playing like this, we're not making any chance, but we need to do something better. Same as England. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Michael.